Coming up on today's episode, don't use 3D HDTV while pregnant, tired, or drunk. One codec to rule them all, online at least. Fun with the Wii Projector Screen 101 and the Blu-ray releases for the week of April 20th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Verizon Droid Apps, GoDaddy, and Gamefly. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Herring. <laughs> and I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air. If it's in HD, we like it. And apparently I'm in a fist-waving kind of day today. Emphasis. <laughs> Emphasis. <laughs> okay, what's to start with? Serious Sam HD or nah. don't use 3D while pregnant, tired, or drunk? That's the one I'm interested in. You're not. Uh, what's you, the deal with 3D? lifetime player? One of my most profound images of you as a friend was yeah. like walking into your your box. That crazy. He used to live in a in, <laughs> in what you, no no. A what do they call compound? those things where you go to hide a bomb shelter yes. at the bottom of a oh. building in San Francisco? That's okay, true. Serious Sam HD. Oh yeah. Steam optimized for HD. A lot of new features. Twenty bucks. Uh, co-op. When if it, it comes still has out. co-op, there's a reason to play. Apparently, there's new multiplayer modes. Mm, I don't nice. know if they, I don't, it was just the co-op man. We go back to back and get the hordes of creatures just rushing you and your friends. In glorious. I'm hoping it's 1080p, so that'll be fun. It's a computer. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> so that <laughs> thing we said before about don't use 3D while yeah. drunk, pregnant, or tired. Who, who a, screwed this fun up? That is a great title from the folks at HighDefDigest.com. But the advice actually comes from a list on Samsung's website. The not-so-amusingly titled Important Safety Information. Read the following warnings before you or your child use the 3D function. So, okay, it includes photosensitive seizure warnings warnings, not only if you're epileptic, and this creepy line, children and teenagers may be more susceptible to health issues associated with viewing in 3D and should be closely supervised when viewing these images. How's that for a creepy quote? Uh, it's pretty vague. <laughs> uh, it seems to cover quite a bit. It's your general warning to just, you know. Well, I, I think there's some like like pre-launch panic or early launch. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we got to get everything out there in case somebody decides that you know it you, could make you dizzy. Well, you'd expect like the usual 3D illness. Remember the the gaming? Oh yeah, VR hats? headsets from oh, the oh my goodness from way long ago. The only time I've ever nearly projectile vomited in an office was wearing the first time somebody demoed one of those with a video game and they didn't tell me what they were doing. But so beyond 3D motion sickness, um, sickness you might expect from 3D use could include altered vision lightheadedness, dizziness, involuntary movements such as eye or muscle twitching, confusion, nausea, convulsions, cramps, that's a good one, and or disorientation. <laughs> you know what? These are similar warnings to what you get with any video game, pretty much. Right. Uh, and it includes all the 3D games. And I remember way back in the day, there are a lot of people who, are, who, who, who can become very motion sick right. from viewing a 3D video game, let alone, I think 3D movies are going to pretty much have that similar effect. If you, if you're a little unstable and you don't want to feel like popping a Dramamine, <laughs> maybe watching 3D TV isn't the thing to do. Okay. But. So you're basically saying, this is fun, relax, enjoy your 3D I, experience. There, there, somebody out there is going to write in and say, I got so sick the other night. Well, if I'm hungover, I'm not watching 3D TV, number one. Some people get seasick on sailboats. Some people don't. There you go. Okay. I will admit, though, you want to make that screen as bright as possible or sit in a dark room with your 3D TV because that will give you a better viewing experience, and it might help with some of these issues, too. It's sitting in a very bright room where the TV is having trouble keeping up with that much light. Right in the room and combating and fi fighting the light source and the screen being bright enough, yeah. You also don't want to sit too close. They Apparently say three, three <laughs> times three. You should be sitting three times really? the height of the screen away from oh, the screen. It's not as immersive as I would want, but... Well, okay. You will, you will be our, I will, our, I'll our be the test, test rabbit. What do they call the little <laughs> bunny rabbits that they mutilate in the labs? Just, um, uh, lab rat? Lab rat. Yeah, there lab you go. Rabbit. <laughs> so I will tape my eyes open and sit in front of a 3D TV for a, a couple days and see what happens. Not Ludwig van. I'll just watch the Masters games over and over and over the two hours a day that they gave me. That's and then I record it like a, like so a weird person I am. Anyway, <laughs> Apple still hates Blu-ray, or so people are chiming in online after the surprise release of new MacBook Pro notebooks. There's no Blu-ray drive option. Big um, shock. Yeah, no big whoop there. There are ways around that, Apple people. You know yeah. what you're doing. You can buy a drive. I mean, Apple's aging lineup of desktops don't offer Blu-ray drives either, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you could just rip the disc and use certain tools. Anyway, there's a whole other story there. Anyway, <laughs> that hasn't stopped the Blu-ray Disc Association, though, from unveiling a new 128 gigabyte format. So before you start thinking of box sets showing up on a single disc, BDXL, as it's called, uh, is really more of a storage format. 
128 gigabytes on a single write once disk, 100 gigabytes on a rewritable disk, that's up from 50 gigs, and the new format's being really targeted at professional industries who need well, basically an expressed desire to find optical disk solutions that enable them to transition away from magnetic media for their archiving needs. That's a quote from the Blu-ray Association. That is a quote from the Blu-ray Association. <laughs> it is for storage professionals, and they aren't looking at this for consumers, at least not yet. So don't hold your breath for so it only be like mega discs, eight or ten discs, storage discs. eight or eight, eight or ten discs. Counting is hard to back up a one terabyte drive, which is you know better not than bad. like four hundred. Buy DVDs. another drive. <laughs> Get more drives, more drives for daddy. Yeah, they're talking about apparently it's going to be a four-layer disc. That's cool. And it will be uh, not compatible with any current player that we have right now for consumer side. This is really for the storage professionals, yeah. you know. And they can create these custom discs. I'll be curious to see if anybody adopts this anytime soon. Because well, it could be like one of those things that like everybody in the medical industry uses it. It's could been be. adopted in the verticals. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. Switching HDMI ports in a second. I like that thought because there's nothing worse than clicking HDMI and have it like searching, searching. Samsung says they got some new technology they bought from Silicon Image or rented, whatever they did. Leased. It's gonna, well, it's, yeah. Licensed the technology. Licensed, licensed. Quick leased port, it. I think it's called. No? Well, yeah. Well, apparently it locks down the HTTP association. So you plug the HDMI cable in, it locks down the HTTP association. So, because basically what happens when you, when you change change channels and your television is sitting there and, and changing searching. Changing sources. Change, yeah, we well change sources. Yeah, Sorry, going from channels. one HDMI port to the other. I guess technically Apple TV to Roku to Blu-ray player is not changing channels. It's Just changing to, or, sources. or it has to re-associate re <laughs> the keys to make everything yeah. secure, make that digital pathway secure. So when you switch on old TVs, like the one right behind us, old, like a year old, anyway, it would, um, it would have to basically re-establish re that right. handshake to Which is what that could, few seconds you're waiting. That could be annoying. So devices. with this new tech from Silicon Image, they really have just made it instantaneous. They basically, like you said, maintain that association with the key so you don't have to deal with this jumping through hoops kind of thing. Starting at the high end, hopefully working its way down. That should be in every TV soon. Yes. That's a, and also, I mm -hmm. like having Silicon Image verify the HDMI ports on products too. They do have a verification service mm -hmm. so that you have a better than average chance of it working with all your connected devices. Look for that when you shop. Trust me, <laughs> it helps. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure how we missed this, but Fox and Universal have made deals with Netflix similar to the Warner Brothers deal back in January. That means a 28 day delay on new rentals in exchange for A, having a deal, period, and B, more titles on streaming Netflix. Now, I'm pretty sure 24, Bones, and Being John Malkovich have already shown up. Yeah, a bunch of titles are actually supposed nice. to show up. Similar deals being worked out with Redbox, the movie rental kiosk company also. Blockbuster, however, big bad Blockbuster has been working on deals so it can rent titles on the day they release and has already signed those kind of, basically, instead of a 28 delay, they're actually getting release on day of and they've signed deals with Fox, Sony, and Warner Brothers. It's good to have the big stick. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm excited, but Tombstone comes out on Blu-ray April 27th, and early reviews say the transfer is strong. One can only imagine what Armageddon will look like on Blu-ray. That's also released on the 27th, because a lot of people are saying some of the some of the big, you know, basically I'll, I'll I'll say special effects CG heavy movies are not looking so hot when they get transferred because the clarity of the Blu-ray transfer, the the high resolution allows you to see how fake some of the rendering is. So Armageddon is going to be a fun one to watch. Might be good for 3D because you have to sit back further, and then it'd be harder to... Well, that's <laughs> I just think it's coming out on 3D. <laughs> well, that's what people say, the, especially in the, on, the, on, the, on the first disc of the Lord of the Rings trilogies, they're basically saying, it's like, wow, you can really see how fake the CG is, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, um, Hobbits. Potentially exciting news, new TV and other websites are claiming Google will open source the VP8 codec later this year, specifically to power HTML5 video to, to have an open source standard for video encoding on the web. Google purchased on to a video compression company back in February, which means they all owe the patents to that company, which or that the patents to that codec, which is very different from MPEG 2 and 4, the H264 codec stuff which basically are administered by MPEG LA and require royalty payments to use. Uh, yes. Yeah, actually there's... It's a big deal. Yeah. It's nice to have an open standard. I mean, there are other open formats out there like Og Vorbis and uh, there's one for Rod video. Fiora. Fiora as well. And Well, that's funny because like the, 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 the company, the VP8 actually 
open sourced VP3 to Og back in, I want to say, 2001, 2002 or something oh, like that. A little bit of history back there. There's a little bit of history. In Good an open though. letter to Google on FSF.org, the Free Software Foundation page, Holmes Wilson argued, well, I'll shorten it. I'll really shorten it. He basically said, this would create a free and open standard for video on the web and a technically advanced one at that. The big rumor is that it will be released May 2010 at the Google I.O. conference. Wonder if like that's like something that would work for hardware also because obviously uh, like course. Apple and other companies are it's like we source. only do H.264 depending on how it's licensed it should be available for anybody to drop in as long as they're not going to manipulate the code right. and they publicly disclose that yes we we're using this code in our product there's a lot of Linux code running around at every TV you buy mm -hmm. nowadays for for anything from the menu systems to video playback functionality they said you know what if we can do it for free. They like Why to save for free. The manufacturers love saving money, and I'm hoping this will translate into software and experiences for the end user mm -hmm. that that costs less to do, especially right. for video delivery. That's one of the big problems right now with codecs is that some of the best ones cost money, and, and sure you can always pirate yeah. crap, but and no. they may not cost you money, but they cost the people that make the hardware money or the people that make the video editing tools money, which means they cost you money too. You just pay for it in a secret way, wrapped up with another product. True. That would be interesting. Can you imagine like a single open source video codec for everything? I think there should be a version of that. That because if, as long as it's adopted by enough hardware, right? So that the toys we play with and enjoy can be used the way we want without costing costing less. Hopefully, and providing only, a better experience. What if it's only open for like online streaming use and not for offline storage? That would make me sad. That would make us both sad. I doubt that's gonna happen. We want to thank our sponsor, Verizon Droid Apps. We're talking about having access to every tool on your phone, the compass, GPS, accelerometer, image capture, and for anybody who loves watching their shows on the go, a video player. The power of the Android apps allows them to run in the background for true multitasking support, unlike other phones we may know, background alerts, and enhancement of each other's performance. Verizon's dominant network, I like that thought, dominant networks, and 3G coverage create an unparalleled mobile data solution to keep you connected to the web and allow you to run heavy data rich features anytime, anywhere, even in parts of central Nevada where no one else goes. And with the ever expanding Android market, you'll always be able to quickly download the apps you need to get the most out of your droid. So if you're looking for some apps to get some awesome video playback, don't miss top picks like the Discovery Channel app, TV.com, E Online, and more, all of which offer the most recent video content direct to your droid. Head over to DroidDoes.com to find new apps for your Verizon droid. What have we been watching this week? I'll admit it, the reviews of the video quality of The Fellowship of the Ring, the first Blu-ray and the Lord of the Ring box set have been so damning. They've basically been like, everybody's video is always like four, four and a half, occasionally five stars when they talk about the video transfer quality. Oh yeah, quality Blu-ray is it, no? No? In the most Blu ray reviews, like three, three and a half for the Lord of the Ring box set. The, it's weird because the first movie is weak, the second movie is better, and Return of the King is supposed to have the best transfer quality. The oh. three, I've held off on buying it at least this week. Um, I gotta say, the really interesting for me is gonna be looking to see if the special effects are as obvious to me as the reviewers are saying. Uh, that the Blu-ray version just makes, especially Gollum, apparently looks like he's just floating out in front of the scenery. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually probably going to buy it this weekend just to see that. I am really stoked with Casablanca on Blu-ray. Yeah. Thanks to everybody, especially Serafina, who pointed out that it was on Blu-ray and available. It looks gorgeous. I've actually been watching a lot of movies on the small screen. I should say I've been small screening movies Aww. this week on the iPad. I'll promise that'll change this week or at least whenever my copies of The Natural, Hoosiers, and The Usual Suspects show up. Oh, by the way, The Deadliest Catch looks as awesome as always on Discovery. The new season just started last week. I need this crab week, meat. Last week? Last is that, night. Is that where they're hunting crab? Or hunting? Capturing crab? Hunting, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Crabbing. I like the idea of like, yeah. I've been bow hunting for crab in and Alaska. Ed, if it was real hunting, they'd have to take diving suits down there and go grab those suckers by hand. But <laughs> yeah, 400,000 pounds of crab. One crab at a time. <laughs> That'd be a sport, man. Have you seen what the water looks like up there? It's it cold. Looks, it looks dangerous. Do not mock the <laughs> commercial not. fishermen. I do not. People die. No, they do have nice boats, though. They do. Fish Big sticks. boats. Well, some of the boats are Fish nice. I, we got to let this go. What have you been watching I, other than MotoGP? MotoGP. Okay, MotoGP Moto2, which is the new, right. the, new, uh, uh, the new category of racing that MotoGP launched this year right. that does a 600cc class motorcycle. Uh, MotoGP went HD this year, so it's the first year it's been in HD, so that's a big deal for me. Also, the F1 season started, so I'm watching Formula One racing. 
they have some of the best HD cameras on those cars, and it's just that's terrible. Terrible. Are you, are you watching F1 because you like it, or because the video quality is so much better than on NASCAR? Those cars are so expensive, so that right. kind of intrigues me. That technology. How do you spend sixty million dollars in a single car? That's incredible. In and and open wheel racing is just mm -hmm. a little more precise than just about anything else you can do. Uh, also, the camera coverage is just epic, and they've been to some brand new tracks this year uh, in Dubai and other places where it's just like. Wow, okay, these are just gorgeous facilities racing around the world. And, and the camera coverage is just epic. But for MotoGP, it's like the new Moto2 for the 600 mm -hmm. series. Also, the 125 series, which is some of the most exciting racing I've watched. So, yeah, motorsports. Little galore. tiny engines, but really serious riders. Uh, uh, evenly matched, too, the bikes right. in terms of performance. That's another thing I like about Moto2 is the evenly matched riders. You get groups of riders fighting it out all the way to the end, and it makes it pretty exciting. But MotoGP is the best racers in the world, in my opinion. So that's just a, that, to me, is just... The epitome of racing on TV and NASCAR. I'll just throw that out there. But Not the crap. <laughs> NASCAR show cool and all, but dang, man, MotoGP rocks. So sorry, I'm still back on hunting crab. Hunting crab. One crab at a time. I've been uh, like pigs, only smaller. I've been watching a lot of the Outdoor Network too in HD. So get my shooting on. All that is that versus now, or is it an actual different? No, they one? have their own like Outdoor Living channel. I have to look it up. But okay, you look that up. I bet you it's on cable, but not satellite. It's one of those. See, you get HD net. I don't get that on. Oh, what is it with that? <laughs> you get HD net on uh, on your Direct TV, but I don't get that on my cable. Distribution system. deals. No. I, well, I don't sorry. get Versus anymore on Direct TV. Really? Oh, that's a, so. It's like no a hockey, no professional bull riding. I couldn't live without my Speed Channel right no. now. No. All right. Time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of April twentieth, twenty ten. First up, Minority Report. Released in 2002, directed by Steven Spielberg, it stars Tom Cruise as a police officer who arrests people for crimes they haven't yet committed. This flick also brought us that awesome gesture-controlled computer that we're still waiting to see mass-marketed, although we're seeing hints of it in products like the Microsoft Surface and certain gesture-controlled TVs like the ones we saw at CES from Toshiba and LG. The Blu-ray comes with 1080p picture and DTS HD master audio 5.1 surround mix and lots of extras including several featurettes that are in HD and exclusives to the Blu-ray release. Next up we have Crazy Heart starring Jeff Bridges as a country music has-been who begins to turn his life around after meeting a reporter played by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Jeff Bridges himself actually performed the songs in the film and earned an Academy Award for Best Actor for his part. The Blu-ray will feature 1080p video, a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 surround track, and extras will include deleted scenes and alternate music cuts, as well as the Blu-ray exclusive featurette titled Jack Bridges, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and Robert Duvall on what brought them to Crazy Heart. And of course, perfectly timed for the April 20th release, we have Cheech and Chong's Hey Watch This, a documentary about their 2008 reunion tour. Releasing this Thursday to coincide with Earth Day instead of the normal Tuesday release date, it's Avatar. Unfortunately, not in 3D. This release will be the two-disc Blu-ray DVD combo. There won't be any extras on the disc, but you will get a coupon towards the purchase of the planned special edition release in November. To tie into the Earth Day release, Fox and the Earth Day Network will also plant 1 million trees in 15 countries before the end of 2010, which fans will be able to adopt by registering at avatarmovie.com. Also this week, 44-inch chest, the basketball diaries, Fist of Legend, The Lovely Bones, The Criterion Collection's Vivre Sa Vie, and The Young Victoria. Let's thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. I've been buying my domains from them for years. They also make it pretty easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server if you're running a website. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. It's easy, it's fast, and we got a discount for you. Use the code HDN11 when you check out. That's HDN11. You'll get 15% off any order of $75 or more. Not quite thinking you're going to spend 75 bucks? Do yourself a favor. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy. You'll find a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. We had a chance to review Optoma's HD20 a few weeks ago. We're talking about a solid-looking sub-1000 1080p projector. A lot of you have been asking about screens and projectors and how to set them up. Do I need a screen? Will a wall or a sheet on a wall do? Should I get a silver or white screen? Mr. Heron, yes. let's discuss setting up projectors and whether or not you need a screen. Yeah, I cover the first part though with your, with your screen needs for your room. If it's a quick and dirty setup, no, point it right at a wall. Even a textured wall, as long as it's not a very dark color, any kind mm -hmm. of light beige or even white, it's going to work just fine. I've also used louvered or curtains that are the long slack kind that you kind of like just spin the little thing and they right. close, shut and flat. 
even on that in a dark room, once the image is going, people will just, your eyes are very good about blending out small imperfections like the seams like between the, the different lines curtains. and your level yeah, of lines. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> in a pinch, no, feel free. Projectors like that, a $1,000 projector too, is specifically made to be set on the coffee table, pointed at a wall, just get busy and get your, get your image up there and going. I mean, so, so you're you're but you're in party projector mode. Like I'm yes. taking it to my friend's house for the Super Bowl. I need I a second watch display with a whole bunch of friends. Got the main TV going, but we need something up on the wall over here for gaming or whatever. And sure. So let's say you're stepping it up. What's the yeah. next step up from broadcasting it on a sheet tacked to the wall or or on a on a plain white or beige wall? There are wall. some inexpensive screen material companies out there. Mm -hmm. I can actually provide a couple links for those as well. That are just look. You want you don't want to paint something right. where you could possibly have the problem with painting a screen is that if it's not even. It's really easy to see it when you go to actually project an image on it. If so don't do the 2% gray and the white primer and, and roll it on your wall? If you're good at it, do yeah. it. But just realize that if, if you accidentally painted one edge too dark or you got a, you know from the roller you had some, a nice line left in there for mm -hmm. extra paint, that kind of stuff can be easily seen. Compared to just getting a, a piece of screen material that's probably factory made by a machine and very, very consistent throughout right. its quality from corner to corner. Uh, also, it, Depending on the room quality, too, how much light is in the room, mm -hmm. that determines what kind of screen you would want. Uh, in most scenarios, I would say go for something slightly gray, because mm -hmm. uh, that will help improve the, the apparent contrast of the picture in a bright room, or a room without perfect, uh, the perfect room is completely dark. Right. With black walls. Uh, however, <laughs> very rarely you're going to find that in somebody's home, unless it's in their basement or something. Anyway, but... So those are some of the things you want to look out for. When, so when you talk about improving the contrast, you're basically you're saying a gray screen will help make blacks look blacker? Exactly. Especially on a super bright projector mm -hmm. like this one where it's, it's black performance isn't up to par with projectors that cost two or three times more. Right. So if you want to help a projector that's suffering and say, it's bright, but black isn't as black as I'd like, or it's not as black as an LCD screen, mm -hmm. that would help a little bit. Now, you don't want to make it too dark, but at the same point, going a little bit off-white is good. Now, when you're looking at, at screens, sometimes you see like a reflectivity value or it talks about like 4% or reflectivity. Or sometimes like that. a gain, that's called. That's right. really just more about, yes, how reflective the screen is in terms what's, of... What's the point of making a screen reflective? Isn't that uh, just going to blind me? Bright rooms, in particular. Oh. They make screens of aluminum material that are so reflective that it's like, wow, okay, you could look at this in a, in a, a standard projector mm -hmm. in a well-lit room. However, the more reflective a screen is the more directional the picture becomes, and then if you get off axis of that, you start to lose picture quality pretty really? quickly. So that's the trade-off. Now, the opposite end of that is what they call a Lambertian diffuser, and where it's, it's perfectly flat, where at any angle you're gonna get the same picture. However, those screens tend to pick up any kind of room light reflections, and it will ruin your contrast performance. So those screens are very difficult to work with, mm -hmm. whereas the highly reflective screens are good for business presentations, but not necessarily the best thing for home theater because, hey, they can, they can actually hurt your eyes, not hurt your eyes physically, but it'll be so bright as to be almost unwatchable. So you have a, a portable screen that's basically been everywhere with you for the last couple of years. It's just a standard, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a standard projection screen made by Epson. They're, um, oh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but a, a, a great portable screen for- Accolade a, Duet. Yeah, the Duet. duet. Uh, you get the screen for about 120 bucks. It gives you a four by three or a 16 by nine mm -hmm. projection projection screen. It's portable. It's right. easy to set up, take down, put away, and it gives me a nice flat, s fairly reflective surface. So it's great for great for rooms where the lighting's not perfect, but it's also just quick and dirty. And mm -hmm. it's just, and it's a and it's a nice flat white surface with a black border around it that helps when I stretch that image out to fit the picture on the screen. I can overshoot it just a little bit mm -hmm. and hide it in that nice masking area around the edge, which and is I should put it, strictly what, for convenience, though. One of the things about the portable screens is if you have a really nice living room, then maybe this, the projection screen thing, because you don't have the money for like the red screen, the red curtains that automatically open, oh, or you don't yeah. want to go up and hang a piece of art in front of it. Portable screen, you can leave it up there, and then when like the nice company is coming over, you can stash the screen somewhere. Totally. Now, if you had the money to do it, go with something maybe if you, especially if you're remodeling, that's right. where you really want to take a look at what you can do because I would suggest thinking, considering like screens that come up out of the ceiling that are mm -hmm. actually mounted up in the ceiling and will come right down and when they retract, you can't even tell they're hardly there. Or screens that could mount on the wall and then just come down at, at request. Or also, you know, if you really want to get fancy, you can even have it come up out of the floor. You can have it done any way you want, but right. uh, it's, it's more about determining what's a good match for your projector. Now, if you are going to the high end, any reputable screen manufacturer will keep track of every screen they've ever made and what projector it was paired with, and they have a really good idea of what works in what situations. And it's good to go go check out some of those sites like Delight, like uh, Stewart Film Screen and others, and they, they actually keep 
meticulous records of these things. So you're basically talking about a, a, a screen can actually be tuned to make a projector look best, period? Most or definitely. Or best in a particular room setting? or Both. And, really? Or to even overcome problems with certain projection systems, especially when they talk about rear projection. If you're going to create a rear projection system where you actually have the projector on the other side of the wall, mm -hmm. the screen is semi-transparent. And in that case, you can actually overcome, say the projector is too blue or the projector is too red, they can even tweak it to help overcome things like that. That's fairly high end. Normally right. you're not dealing with that. You'll more or less make adjustments on the projector itself to affect the image quality. But if you had to, that can be done. So what's your favorite, like, no cost barred, like, I'm somebody else is writing the check. I, I won a poker game in Dubai at the Moto GP. Yeah. What, what are you buying? Like, are you setting up a complete room still? I, I would do the complete room, but the screen in particular, I would want one that has the motorized automatic masking where it'll look at the, say, on my video server, uh -huh. every video is tagged with the aspect ratio. I could tag that into the server app that drives the screen. So it's like, oh, this is a 16 by 9 movie. Masks come in to 16 by 9. Projection hits that. It's already set up. Oh, I switch to a 4 by 3 movie. The masks come in further to make a 4 by 3 screen. Or I go 235, 240 to 1. They'll stretch right back out and do that. You know, size, I'm going to go as big as possible. Brightness, it'll be whatever I'm dealing with in terms of the projector. But those are the kinds of screens I'm really into. And, and acoustically transparent is the other thing I really like. Because mm -hmm. ideally, I'd want to put the speakers behind the screen, but you need to have them perforated in such a way to allow that sound to transmit through that screen material without, without changing the sound quality drastically. Right. So that, those are the things I would look for, really. And those screens are out there and available from the companies I just mentioned, too. Oh, I like that thought. I still like the ones that actually... transparent. That's one of the really fun things about when you go to CES and you see all of the, the uh, this insane sort of ACTV mounts and screen situations. There are those Cinecurve screens, too. That's a, probably a trademark name from Stuart. I'm just probably throwing out that. But they're, they're actually curved screens as well so that the distance from the projector to each point on that screen is equal because mm -hmm. you can actually get some weird shifting on a projector pointing it at a flat surface because the light on the sides is traveling a little bit further than the light in the center. But if you curve the screen, that eliminates that. And it can create a more immersive experience as well. But that's just something, another option out there that they're willing to you know, show and try to sell you. But it, it's something to consider. I like that thought. And, we, and also, we, for the spousal acceptance factor, that always comes down to who you live with and can, will they tolerate this. Keep in mind that you can hide screens very well nowadays. You can have them come out of walls. You can, you can mount it as almost like a piece of the room furniture and time it to, to wall colors, lighting systems, mm -hmm. anything to make it blend in better. So don't, don't poo-poo it. And it can always retract and disappear if need be. So better to discuss than dismiss, Consider ladies and gentlemen. Consider your projectors. <laughs> Consider, yeah, we're, we're like, <laughs> and screens. Based on the emails, you're excited about them too. We got some more projectors coming in for review as they show up. We'll review them. Tell you more about using projectors to get your HD on. Right now, though, we got to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GameFly. You've heard us talk about them. They are the largest online video game rental service. What's that mean? You get to choose from over 7,000 titles, new and classic, all consoles, all hand held and the plan well it's simple you pay $15.95 a month and Gamefly is going to let you rent one to four games at a time you get to keep it for as long as it takes you to finish it or as long as you want there's no late fees people no due dates shipping is always free right to your house or wherever you get your mail and once you're done playing a game send it back Gamefly is going to give you the next available game on your list and if you really like the game like I want to keep it Click Keep It on the Gamefly website. The game is yours at a discounted price. They'll even mail you the case and the manuals free of charge. Now, that sound good? Here's something even better. AC Nation fans can get a free two-week trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash HDNation. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details, but do us a favor. Keep AC Nation rolling by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly. You watched somebody set a new asteroids record? I did. A world record, live. They were streaming it on the internet. They actually had a camera watching the screen. Asteroids, that video game circa 1979. Oh, yeah, that's it. He had like 44 million, I want to say, he had to rack up. Took him 53 hours. Okay, so it was only like two, two, just a little over two days. At the end, he was like, just watch me. Make sure I don't fall over. Make sure I don't fall over. Because he was like, at that point, I think, just going mad. Yeah. And they finally stopped him. But 53 hours is a long time to be awake. That's a long awake. time to be awake playing asteroids. And occasionally, he'd, he'd get so many extra men that he'd be able to take breaks and go close his eyes for like five, ten minutes <laughs> and come back. <laughs> it's awesome. I, you know, for old school gaming. It was good to see somebody challenge. I guess that's been a long-standing high score for a while. I think 41 million was the, the old score. And so he beat it by like, I think, a couple hundred thousand. Good to know. Mm, it's good. 
Well, we're talking <laughs> gaming. We've been waiting for Netflix to get their uh, streaming support for the Wii rolling, and it's here. Mr. Heron's going to show it off for you because, quite frankly, I'm tired of getting tweets asking us how the service works on the Wii little Nintendo console. So it's another, do you have to load the disc every time you want to watch Netflix or just Just once? like the PS3. You have to put the disc in in order to use the service. Okay. Simple enough. Nothing to really install, per se. Ta-da. Right up there in the top corner of the V menu. Go to Netflix, fire up Start. Now, I already went to the Netflix website and set up this device, which was right. like took all of a minute. So really no big deal. And this is accessing my queue. has a couple of movies in there. Uh, after burning through Lost, I've been basically getting my rentals lately, so I haven't been doing too much with my queue <laughs> as far as the instant streaming goes. But uh, Let's see. You can use the directional pad for controlling for categories and titles. If you can see the bottom of the screen there. That makes it pretty easy. So... Likewise, I can just go. Oh, oh, bullet. Play bullet. Bullet. Because there's no HD titles on here. No, right? and I'll be honest, on a 55-inch screen that we're looking at right here, it is a little fuzzy, I will say. It's not as, you know. This is uh, 480p coming out of the Wii and component video input into the TV set. So it's so basically a 4.3 for those I'll resume here. Let me, uh, oh, where's my control hand? There we go. <laughs> and I got to say, it, it works. It seems to work. We're doing this over a wireless connection to... Arguably one of the most challenging wireless environments, I think, in the uh, studio here. Yeah, that would be Art Studio Wireless. Uh, d d d much of the delay you're about to experience could well be our, our studio network. Was it faster at home, Mr. Heron? It was zippy. It just happened. Uh, right. We jumped right in. We were trying a different title, though, earlier, and it just popped right up, of course, now that we're doing this, quote-unquote, live um. to tape. <laughs> oh, there we go. The bar moved uh, one quarter, which makes me feel a little bit better. So hopefully it won't There's be too much so longer. much security on the wireless network uh, here, here at go. work. It's kind of a nightmare. Kaboom! Oh, look at Full that. Full screen, 480p-ish. Of course, I'm in a very dark scene here. Oh, wait, it's the beginning of the movie. Can you skip forward? I bet you I can. Let's get a car chase going. Where's How? Steve McQueen? Yeah. Now you're... Bring oh. on the cool oh, stuff. This is the part I have no clue. Can, so can I grab the slider then? Oh, my. So I can go back and forth with the Wii controller. Here, let's just stop. Oh, let me scroll a little bit more here. There, it's filling it in. Take it right to the end. You can see the it clock there telling me where I'm at. Yeah. How about there? Because it's not going to fill in the screen yeah, until you stop moving. Stop that. Oh, there we go. That one, that one, that one at the end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The far end. The car chase. The hills. There. <laughs> Retrieving. Dun, 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 dun. Is this the infamous San Francisco chase sequence? Oh, yeah. I've owned this movie for a few years now, and I've yet to sit down and watch it all the way through. I really, Are you kidding me? I, no, I am not. I, I shouldn't even mention that out loud. Shame. Yes, shame. This is Steve McQueen. It, it, yes. This is Mustangs. Yes. This is mayhem in the streets of your former city. Hey, I think, oh, never mind. I used you, to live near there. Yes, you did used to live near there. <laughs> can't believe you haven't watched this. Oh, oh wow, that's the TV's good. back in default mode, so it's smoothing everything. How oh, horrible. that too. I've got everything that you hate enabled on this TV. <laughs> it's definitely a DVD transfer. It's definitely like DVD quality. It's, well, you know, it works, though. Uh, yeah, okay. So You know what? For smaller screens, I don't think this would be an issue whatsoever. For like a 32-inch LCD mm -hmm. or uh, smaller plasma screens, right. I think it's going to look just fine, especially if the Wii is the only thing you have. Rather than going out and buying a new device, right. you can get a free disc sent to you just on your Netflix account and set it up and do it. Uh, yeah, that definitely makes perfect sense. This, this is going to look as good as a DVD is going to blow it up on your screen, I think. Mm. Maybe a little less. Okay, it's going to no, be a little no. more compressed than a DVD is <laughs> going to be on your screen, but it, it's acceptable. 10 megabit with a DVD, so. If you want to get your cinephile yes. examining every single frame. It's all about convenience. Get a Blu-ray player. Yeah, this is, if you got get a your, Wii, get the disc. Get caught up on Lost. It's free. Yeah. And do works. us a favor, use HD Nation if you sign up for... Uh, Netflix, www.netflix.com slash HD Nation. Not that this is a commercial, but hey. No, they are a sponsor, though. We, yeah, they are. They've been, they've been should good. We, uh, should we dump the Wii? Yes. I'll grab the Wii. Okay. Or, here. I'll move the Wii. You read the question. <laughs> okay. We are a paragon of organization in this week's show. Speaking of consoles, let's take this email from John in nearby Fremont, California, who writes... You have recently done two spots on PS3 Blu-ray audio settings, and I'm sure you're sick of the subject. However, I haven't upgraded my sound system, and I don't have HDMI. I'm assuming on the AV receiver. I have an older receiver that only has optical and coax digital audio inputs with plain old Dolby Digital and DTS-51 decoding. What audio settings should I set my PS3 and Blu-ray players to for best effect? Signed, John from Fremont. 
Yeah, before da, 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 anybody da. mocks, you know, a lot of people have a lot of money tied up in, in AV receivers. They don't necessarily want to upgrade just because they have DTS. They gotta, they've, 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 they've got a toss link out the back of the Blu-ray player. Or Still the very PS3. usable. There's a toss link. I'll be there, honest right? with you, unless, you, unless you're dealing with a very well-tuned setup, you might not even hear the difference. Right. So... I, I, I would agree. Heretic that I am, I am, I, I am overdue to, to accept an invitation from Dolby to go over and hear the perfect, uh, one of their amazing auditioning rooms where I can actually, they're telling me um, it's going to be obvious, the oh, Dolby yes. True HD experience. But With the right setup, it would be. So are we trying to ensure bitstream output over the, the optical connection? Yeah, the just connection? what settings should you look at in the okay. PS3 to ensure that, you know what, I'm going to use the optical output on the PS3 to my AV receiver. HDMI probably going straight to the TV. I actually have a similar setup at home with an old home theater and a box kit mm -hmm. in a room where the I'm unable to use HDMI audio output. So I'm doing something actually quite similar to this and easy enough to set up. Um, I like the sparklies on the PS3. I'm telling menu. you, and they change for the seasons and uh, anyway, spring. Spring is here. Anyway, <laughs> log into your PS3, make sure it's updated, and scroll over to your settings on the cross-link media bar. To the remote play settings? The security uh, settings? The sound, sound settings? Sound, there we go. OK, I was a little confused there. Audio output settings. And here you can select what you want. And basically, you're going to say, give me optical digital. What formats? Now, this can either be done automatically, or you can pick and choose which ones you want. You just mentioned that your, your AV receiver supports DTS and Dolby Digital. So you can just go ahead and select those. So basically, we just like checkbox, checkbox. Totally. I would. Would you undo the linear PCM or leave them in Those place? two are probably supportive. The 41.4 kilohertz and the 48 kilohertz are fairly standard. OK. Honestly, I'd try to select them all if possible. But if you, if you select one of these and it isn't compatible, you can end up with some painful noises coming out of your, your system. <laughs> so do be careful with the linear PCM audio stuff. That's really a raw feed of audio. And if it's not supported right, you'll hear howling, screeching, yeah, and uh, bleeding mayhem. Maybe you shouldn't check those. I'm just going to say that. Anyway, there's that. Boom, done. It gives you confirmation. Hit enter. Also, audio multi-output. So if you want to do multiple connectors simultaneously, maybe you're running the HDMI into a receiver, but you still want the optical running anyway, here you can have that set up as well to ensure that whatever format you selected in that other menu I just showed you, mm -hmm. this menu would ensure that to make sure it's not being downsampled to two-channel audio in any of those cases. So. It gives so you pretty much everything you need there. You might want to do it to your HDMI output to your television when you're gaming in a quiet, late night environment. Like using the and TV then speakers. To your toss link or his skin, person. like John? So. Uh, <laughs> what was that poor gentleman's name? From? It is John. John from Fremont. And so, in that case, maybe you do want to use the TV speakers. And right. then you would have the HDMI audio for your uh, regular connection. And so, be perfectly happy with that. So maybe they set it up so that like one output goes to the TV for late night gaming, the other one goes to the full on surround system. Exactly, and similar to what John's probably doing. Right. Uh, maybe maybe late at night you want to use just the TV speakers and not fire up the full surround sound system. So in that case, it would be nice then <laughs> to ensure that. Well, in this case, it probably wouldn't matter for the alt audio multi out mode. Two channels is probably all the TV is going to handle anyway. But. Right. What the heck? I say just turn that feature on. It's there anyway. So. <laughs> Good deal. John, hope that helps you out. It's, it's basically, look, we've said it before, we'll say it again. You know, the idea of 7.1 and having a brand new receiver is nice, but if you got Dolby 5.1, you've... And actually, I should say and Dolby and DTS. I, I have to say it's amazing how many discs, are, Blu-ray discs especially, are encoded in DTS and have no Dolby support unless you want to watch them in Spanish or French or Uzbekistani. And or no gaming, too. To Don't forget Uzbeks. your game consoles. Make sure you go into all your games and select... 5.1 audio, or whatever the high-end audio format is. <laughs> Reward yourself. Reward yourself, you people. Yeah, this all set up. Want to keep the Flame Wars on the message boards and out of your kitchen? You should definitely check out Rich the Three's new interactive cooking show, Food Mob. Join host Niall Harbison. He's a chef. He's talented. And he's going to show you how to make amazing food. The premieres this Thursday. He's going to cook up a delicious, a luxurious breakfast dish. He's Irish. That was a bad Irish accent. And after that, you can turn in to see a new dish every Thursday at revision3.com slash foodmob. And they'd like it if you actually took pictures or video and sent in the results of your cooking creations. This is going to be fun one people check it out we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of hd nation as always we want to know what you think so send your comments questions or suggestions to hd nation at revision3.com you can also catch us on facebook we have a facebook 
Awesome. <laughs> Who knew? I'm gonna get a Facebook. Friend me. You have zero friends. Yeah, I got really? No. Did you see the latest uh, South Park? Facebook.com slash HD Nation or on Twitter at twitter.com slash HD Nation or hang out with other viewers at the HD Nation forums at revision3.com slash forum. And we got links to pretty much everything we talked about in the show on the show page at HDNation.tv. You also find all the links to subscribe to the show. So if you're not getting the latest mm. episode of HD Nation delivered to your doorstep, what are you waiting for? Do us a favor, people. Subscribe, watch, and tell your friends about it. Till next time. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Robert Herron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week on HD Nation. Yeah.